I'm here with Karen Allen. First of all, welcome to Fort Lauderdale. Thank you so much. So talk to us about the making of your drama, Colwell. Um, so we shot it in a little town called Knoxon, Pennsylvania, which was a town that, like the Colwell, which is a fictional town, was erased. So it's a film about towns, 3,700 towns in the northeast of the United States have been erased by the federal government over the last maybe 10 or 15 years, which means that they have decided that those towns no longer have the populations that they consider to be like meaningful. So they've erased them off the maps. They've taken away their zip code and taken away their post offices. So the towns really no longer exist. Doesn't matter if they're 250 years old or what. So uh, it's, that's what Colwell is. It's a town that's based on a town that's been erased. And I play the postmaster of the town. So it's a little bit of a parallel between the kind of macrocosm of how it affects the town and the microcosm of how it affects one woman whose life has been dedicated to this is her livelihood. This is what she does. Ah, now, Animal House is being screened. Yeah, yeah. And like I mentioned, it's one of my favorite comedies. Uh, good. How does it know? How does it feel knowing that new generations will be discovering Animal House for the first time? Well, I love it because I, I've seen it over many generations now, and it ages really well. Although it's wildly politically correct in this environment, and I sort of love that about it. You know, I mean, what's kind of great about its political incorrectness is that it's it's a broad spectrum political incorrectness. It doesn't target any kind of particular, it targets everybody and everything. So um, it kind of is almost acceptable in, in, in the broadness of its targeting. So um, I don't know. I, I think I've, I've watched it with a lot of new generations coming and going and seeing it for the first time. And, and it's it appears to be uh, aging like a good wine. Speaking of Animal House, Peter is also House, here. <laughs> Peter, I'm Austin Pond. Nice, to, nice meet to meet you. First of all, welcome to Fort Lauderdale. Thank you. Now, when it comes to a film festival like the Fort Lauderdale International Film Festival, how important do you think a film festival like this is for, let's say, a short film like Extra Innings? You know, I, I think it's, you never can tell. You never know who's watching. Uh, and for us as actors, it's always exciting if somebody who has a job is watching you work mm -hmm. on something. That's how we get work. But I really enjoy doing it. I love the director. We both worked with John Gray before in a movie called White Irish Drinkers. And he sent me the script and he said, I wrote this for you. I'd love you to do it. And uh, it's already making the, the festival cycle. And it's, he's already won like 10 or 15 awards for it. Oh. So it's doing very well. Yeah, yeah. I was just talking to Karen about Animal House. Yeah. It's one of my favorite comedies I've of heard all of time. it. <laughs> <laughs> now, knowing it's being screened here at, as a part of the classics, how does it feel knowing that new generations are discovering for the first time? Uh, it, it's been going on, well, for 41 years. Every year there's a new group that is uh, just finishing high school and going to college. And I remember when the film first came out, there was a 12-year-old boy who had seen the film, and he said to me, I can't wait to go to college. <laughs> and I didn't want to dissuade him that it was not going to be exactly like oh the movie. Oh, gosh. Yeah. I could only imagine yeah. the face you would be yeah. like, this is not like Animal House at all. Yeah, no, not hardly. <laughs> but it was, uh, it is always amazing to do something that lasts uh, for a long time. So. Well, thank you guys so Thanks. much for talking to us about it. I really appreciate it. Much. And congratulations to you both Thanks. once again.